Come on, Darwin. Today, we continue working on this project. What is it? Well, that right there is going to be a hobbit house, I call it, aka fancy playhouse. And on top of it, and continuing the length where you see the posts, we're building a structure to hold solar panels. It's a solar array with a hobbit house underneath. And I made a video about the work up to this point, so make sure to check it out in case you missed it. My name is Lynn, this is the Darwin Orbit Channel. Let's get started. Okay, so up to this point now we have posts in the ground, we have floor joists almost like a deck, and on top of the floor joists we have rigid insulation and OSB panels. You may wonder why would you do that? Uh, well, it's kind of like a sandwich, right? So we have joists that are supported underneath with concrete posts, and then the insulation provides a moisture barrier, and then the OSB can cap on top of it, so you have kind of like multiple layers. You can see there's dips down a little bit right there. There's no insulation on that side. That's because that's where the garden shed is going. And then on top of this, there will be an additional floor later on. And just working on the rafters right now, figuring out the angle of those. So basically, yeah, since this is a shed roof, we have two versions of a bird's mouth cut. And they slip in and rest on the two side boards, or I don't know what you call them, the fascia and the ridge beam. So I was just looking over all the rafters and I realized one of them are put on the wrong way. There's two different cuts and this cut right here should be the other way. This one should be more of a capping piece that goes down. Like here you can see it just kind of caps it nicely in place. Whereas on the other side it has more of this kind of kind of an open angle right in the, in the top there. Let's move this one around. I just look at this and I'm struck by how all woodworking and all construction fundamentally is about fitting things together and whenever possible you want wood to fit into wood so you're not relying on metal fasteners. And that's exactly what these cuts do. Very simple. Now the one thing to, uh, to realize here is this, there's basically two roofs, right? This one we're working on right now is just for the house and there's going to be shingles on top. Then there's a secondary roof. Um, this guy right here that c carries the whole way and that's what's going to hold the solar panels. So this one right here is not going to hold any weight at all. <laughs> you know, no solar panels or anything. It's just going to be tucked in underneath the other structure. But you still want to add like shingles and stuff and make it a real structure because the solar panel roofing is not going to be completely sealed. That's going to be kind of open so water and stuff will come down. So OSB going on top of the rafters. We got cutouts here so it can slip around the posts. And so there's a post there, a post there. And this is what you get when you use leftover building materials, a little hodgepodge of different underlayment papers to go on top of the OSB and then shingles. Okay, ended up taking off those two sections like they were. They were there, there. Just made it hard to, uh, to attach this underneath. Now the other thing you can see is we've sectioned off this area now that's going to be the garden shed. So. There already was no insulation there, but now we have a stud in the middle there, a stud there. This garden shed concept was a bit of an afterthought because at first I got really excited about the house, but then I thought, does a kid really need all that space? I mean, in some ways it's kind of cozier when the house is a little bit smaller inside. Um, and we don't really have a good place right now for garden tools. And I'm talking basic garden tools, not really big ones. And then the idea came to me like, why not kill two birds with one stone? Or in this case, three birds, <laughs> considering the solar structure as well. And tuck away a little corner, uh, which later on we can you know, organize and make nice and, and just have a designated space for some tools and equipment. 
So the walls here are just kind of hanging off the structure here. Um, the, the, they're not carrying a lot of weight. The whole the, the ceiling is not carrying a lot of weight. Now we added a support piece right here that's resting on this beam, this beam. So it looks quite different here now when it's sitting a little bit enclosed. Here we have these kind of crenellations cut out and then we're actually going to cover the uh, the roof here, the ceiling with a beadboard. And one of the reasons for that is because we have nails coming down here from the roof, from the shingles. Um, so just to, to kind of carry that way you won't also, you won't hit your head on, on things that just pop down. <laughs> it will all be the same height, the ceiling. So right here is what the door is going to be. So framing it for the door next. So you need to measure the door um, and like the casing and like how much space do we need here. So we have this piece right here and then we'll put a piece right there and then do a straight piece across. Now of course the other thing we need to do is to chop that door off. So we picked up um, an interior bathroom door because we're looking for something pretty like small and narrow. This one is 28 inches wide. Um, it seems rather impossible to find a short door however though and if you get into specialized territory the prices just go up a lot if you can even find it. So instead you know getting an interior more narrow door that we can chop off and then you know paint or whatever protect it that way. So this door is 118 dollars and was debating about whether to either you know go this route or build our own door but if you're building your own door the materials alone would be more money than that and take a lot of time. So this was kind of like the cheapest most convenient way to go. Now there will be a window here and there will be a window on the side. And now in terms of the windows, we went with like basic and cheap new windows. Like you could make the argument like oh, why didn't you go and buy, you know, use old windows. But I didn't want like a, like a, some old windows with really thin glass that might not be able to open. Um, I wanted something that was operable that you can open and close without any issues. Since it's a kid's house, I should probably clarify that what I was looking for was windows that could handle a fair amount of abuse. Let's just put it that way. So a couple points on how this is constructed. Okay, so this is not going to be like a finished, like livable space, right? It's more like a tree house in that sense that it's designed to be open. There are, there's only going to be the, uh, the siding and there's not gonna be a vapor barrier and then, you know, sheet rock and, and, and multiple layers. It's like designed to be open to breathe more. Many of these studs here are placed in this direction and not the other direction. That's because there's not a lot of weight um, the, like on here. Plus it gives more space to nail things into. Now the interior here is just going to be open. We're only going to seal this with uh, a gap filler, caulk and trim wherever it's needed. I'm going to have a, a, a vent right there um, that will like let the air in so it will be able to breathe so that moisture won't build up here and that's one of the reasons why we put insulation on the floor here to prevent moisture from coming up from underneath and bugs <laughs> bugs and snakes the wildlife <laughs> So here's the frame for the door. Bought, you know, when you buy the door, it comes with a frame. So obviously it needs to be cut as well. Now using a reciprocating saw here. So the door is uh, is in. It, it, it's it's kind of funny when you cut it from this direction and then. Um, it's so low, it looks so funny. But um, yeah, this is cool. The one thing about this door, so this is a hollow door, right? So um, now it's just like a hole up into it. So we'll need to cap it with something, maybe like a piece of wood in epoxy or something to seal it up. I mean, you don't want a lot of moisture and stuff going inside of there. And then we have the sections for the windows. And in this situation, we're just measuring out the size, drilling holes, and then cutting out the holes out of the siding, this T111 siding. And this siding we're using because it's affordable and it's easy to work with. You don't have to mess around with individual boards. You set up these individual sheets that you can cut into. It's one product often used for sheds and structures like this. Of course you don't want to leave this type of siding untreated, you want to paint it, um, but I rather like the plank style look it comes with. I mean it looks like wood board, kind of like when you buy a sheet of beadboard and it has those separations. Um, now T111 siding, it's not like a product that I would use for a main house, but for a playhouse or a shed or something like that I think it is absolutely perfect. 
windows make such a big difference, right? You let light in where there wasn't light before, you see a different view. And that's what I most like about putting a window in, you get a different view from, you know, there ever was before. Um, so here, get a cap here. We're gonna add a windowsill here now because windowsills are the best, aren't they? I don't understand why there's not enough windowsill in houses. So you, cause you get a little extra shelf, right? So we got a piece here, then we're gonna add pieces underneath here to support the window and then frame it in from there. So we got the supports here now. So we've got two by four, we're gonna add pieces down. And so this is one side of the window. We want this other, this second window to be the same height, right? Um, so got a level piece of wood right here. Now I'm gonna move it over and make sure it's level, mark it. of my little shop. <laughs> we just had one of those torrential rainstorms like the air is thick, you know, like it's in the jungle. So just, just wanna go check on everything. So at this point we've left this back open um, and part of it open just because it's easier to move in and out than securing the door properly. Um, but it's now when I look outside my house, um, you know, looking towards here, like you can see, oh, there's a real house there now, starting to take shape. So, uh, yeah, we still need to put a window in there and uh, properly install the door and cap the door and then add a piece there. Now we actually just put this window up because it was gonna start raining and I prepared for it, but I'm gonna take this off again and then put caulk um, to secure it in place, trim and all of that. Now on this side here, so I'm debating about a couple of things. One idea is to put a solar panel um, vertically because we have an extra solar panel and would get some sun. So that might be a good place, although I haven't completely decided on that. If not, maybe create some sort of flower planters situation. I don't know. Now this, actually a pretty good amount of space here. Debating, actually thinking maybe not a door. Maybe we will just kind of have it open. You know, it will be closed in here, of course. But maybe it will be kind of an open shelter uh, where we will keep you know, rakes, shovels, things like that. You can always close this in at a later point or not. We'll see how it goes. It's an airy house at this point. <laughs> so for the shed portion here now, so we're gonna cap this now. So you might have seen me review these various portable batteries, these solar generators, that kind of thing over time. And while they're great in emergencies and for travel, I have to say in a place like this, first of all a building site, but then also just an off-grid structure because this is not wired, right? It's absolutely perfect. Ideal for charging up the compressor, the batteries for the tools, lights. And you can see I've got the fan going here, which may seem weird because we're outside, but it's very hot and muggy. So I fan is nice and uh, this battery here is what will ev eventually power this place as well and we're gonna we're gonna plug a lot of things into it but more on that next time thanks for hanging out and watching also thanks to our patrons for sponsoring the video really appreciate it let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah I'll see you guys soon